one thing I want to touch upon is we heard this story that before you were getting ready to fight Crone Gracie, you know, those jujitsu gyms wouldn't let you in. Certain people wouldn't let you train with them. They said, oh, you're fighting a Gracie. You got to kick it. Is this true? Mm -hmm. It's true. Mm -hmm. So you would go around to jujitsu gyms. They knew you were going to fight him. They wouldn't even let you train? Yeah. Wow. Wow. They said that they wow. just didn't want the beef. They were like, like, no disrespect. We like you, but just it wouldn't look good. And, and they would take it personal. And so I had to go back to my hometown to my original instructor and a kid that I had gotten into. So when I started training back in Palm Springs, California, uh, my instructor was, was a brown belt and, and I didn't have a lot of money. So he was like, look, if you bring people in and they sign up, then you don't have to pay. So I would like go out to parties and take like a Gatorade. So I felt like I was drinking something and I'd say, Hey man, you know, what are you doing? You should come do jujitsu. And I would like, I was like trying to bring all these people in. And one of the guys, we call him hurricane. And, uh, he, he's probably one of the best jujitsu guys out there in Palm Springs. And, uh, I was like, Hey man, I got this big fight. Will you help me out? And so he, he was like my main training partner for that fight. And uh, yeah, and it's crazy because that fight goes way back because me and uh, me and Kron went against each other when he was uh, 17 and I was 19 years old in jujitsu. And they they we competed uh, and they wouldn't give me any points in the match. And, wow. and, and I had just won the Pan Ams. And it, it really pissed me off because I was like I said, I turned my life around. I, I stopped doing drugs. Just just stopped. I still had a lot in my house, <laughs> but I wasn't doing them. And I changed, I was changing my life and I um, trained jujitsu for a year. I got my blue belt at a year. I put myself in the Pan Ams without a coach. I just drove out there, signed myself up as a blue belt. They didn't have white belt in, in Pan Ams back then because it was pretty prestigious. There was almost 60 people in my division and, I, and they were all people that were blue belts about to get their purple. I didn't know that. <laughs> and and so they were like you're gonna get smoked you know you just got your blue belt and so i i competed and i i won i got first place i submitted everybody and then the very next tournament was the u.s open so they made it so that me and so at the same time cron won pan ams the same division as a junior oh, wow. so like a teenage division so then after that they the u.s open me and him competed against each other in like hoist um I want to say uh, Hickson, uh, Henzo, I, I want to say like they were like all right there. And I walk up to to go against them and I'm just like, oh, cool. And um, the guy's like, do you speak Portuguese? The referee, I was like, no, why? Why? That's a weird question. <laughs> and then he was like, okay. And then they went and tried to give Kron the green and yellow belt because we have the same geese and everything. Mm -hmm. And then he looked at the ref and went <laughs> and turned his back. And the ref went like that and turned and gave it to me. And I was like, what's that mean? The green and yellow belt. You have to wear it on top of your belt. Mm -hmm. So they know who's who when mm -hmm. they're scoring points, mm -hmm. you know, and like no gi, they do the little ankle thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, so they give you a, a different color belt to wear so they can differentiate. And, uh, but why he didn't want the green and yellow belt? Cause he thought it was disrespectful to him. To have to wear that. that so only that one belt. person had to wear it. Yeah. yeah. And so when they it, they tried wow. to give it to him, he like told the ref, like, get out of my face. And the ref turned around and handed it to me. And I was like, I've never seen that happen. Wow. Because I had been competing a lot. And so we we went at it and um he beat me on points, but they wouldn't let they wouldn't give me any points. And so I was all bummed out. And then the next day I used to be, you know, I was buying all the magazines. I was a huge fan of all you guys and mm -hmm. And and I would I was just so into it because it was changing my life, and uh, the next day, I, I, all the Gracie magazines were written by a guy Kid Pelegro was uh, he used to write for the Abu Dhabi website, which was a big jujitsu website back mm -hmm. in the day, and he wrote Cron Gracie beats Chan uh, Pan Am champ to become U.S. Open champ, and I was like. I, like it like crushed me. I was like, man, I'm just some kid from Palm Springs that won this tournament and they used him, they used me to like give him a step up. And I'm like, that was so disrespectful. 
And I, I wrote him an email and I was like, man, fuck you, dude. I got homies. I'll come down there. And meet you <laughs> and I was still, I was still a little bit hood, you know? And, uh, and, uh, the guy said, look, if you, he was like basically threatening to ban me from all jujitsu competitions. So I was like, well, fuck jujitsu then. And then I started focusing on MMA. Wow. I stopped wearing the gi. Mm, wow. <laughs> then. 16 years later, I'm on a four fight losing streak. I just had three kids, got married, moved to Orange County. I'm at like this crossroads and I'm like not knowing what's going on. I, I, I'm getting better in the gym, but I'm on this losing streak. And then they go, I'm like, I'm lucky if they give me another fight, if they don't cut me. And they're like, do you want to fight Cron Gracie? I was like, I was like, you know, we got history, right? And then they were like, no, nah, I don't know that. I was like, yeah, I'll fight him. So that's that's how that fight came about. And then I couldn't get in. None of the jiu-jitsu schools would want to train me. And then this this punk, when we did the weigh-ins, the face-off, he was the last one to show up. And then when we go do our face-off, I'm like, like, I, you ain't going to intimidate me. I've already fought the best of the best. And this dude walks up and puts his fist in my face like that. And uh, my manager was like, why didn't you like push him? And I was like, to me, that was a coward. Like, like I'm the striker. Like, you're, you're a nobody. Like, in, in, in jujitsu world, yes, like, respect to the name. But now you're in my world and, and you, you're trying to intimidate me. I was like, nah. I was like, this kid's already breaking. And then we had a war. Uh, it was pretty one sided, but man, I, I, I gave him so much respect for. The punishment he took and kept coming forward. I was impressed. He was tough. I, I hit him with the nastiest body shots I ever hit anybody with, and he just kept walking forward, and, and uh, he took it all. 